Good morning from the Gold Coast, Queensland, Australia, and welcome to my vlog. So this vlog is about my new tantric playmate and lessons we can learn from me in regards to it. First, we're going to introduce to introduce you to me. My name is Priestess Vanessa, hence yeah, the, the title of the vlog, Priestess Vanessa's Vlog, and I am a person a professional tantrika. Now what is a professional tantrika is I am someone that does uh, tantric massages for men and women and yes that includes Yoni and Lingen massages. It also includes coaching in regards to sexuality, body and whatever you feel drawn to need to do with me. But my basis for all my coaching and all, well it's not really coaching, I like to call it guidance because I'm really guiding you back to you and your innate knowledge in you and who you are really unapologetically, 1%, uh, is that it's based, got a big strong basis in Tantra and also got a big strong basis coming from what I call the lower chakras, the sexuality and all that sort of stuff because once we can release the shame and taboo around sex and sexuality, Fucking awesome, man, because believe me, it's given me a lot. It's given me men, it's given me money, it's given me business, another business, I've got two now. <laughs> it's given me more connectedness to myself and more connectedness to life and the beauty of life and love and all that sort of stuff. So, and allowed me to be unapologetically who I am and me in all my delicious juiciness and complications and messiness and everything. So anyway, that's who I am, I am a little bit about me. So well, we're gonna go backwards. I call myself a serial poly pansexual and what I mean by going backwards, we'll step down with my experience, my personal definition of pansexuality so then you can see if this vibes for you. Now, I, as I mentioned, went from hetero to bicurious to bisexual to pansexual. Pansexuality is very recent new development, to be brutally honest. And I actually identified with bisexual with the longest, longest time because I had a specific type of woman and had a specific type of man that I was attracted to. Okay, and I was, and I had to be a man, had to be a woman. You know that sort of stuff. I was very much into the gender. Now, thanks to my work as a tantrika uh, in, in tantra, both professionally and personally, I've really started to explore. And I'm going kind of, I'm, this is about airy fairy and a bit woo woo, but that's okay. That's who I am. And I'm not going to apologize about that. And there's something in this for you guys. So allow you to be who you are and wherever you are in your journey, you are totally in the right place, right? And you are totally okay with who to be who you are at your point in your journey. Who I am at this point in my journey is someone that's now delving into the fact that I can be attracted to bodies. Did I say gender? No. The person, the body, their mind. I am attracted to all all three levels I call it. The body, there's definitely got to be attractiveness to the body, the mind, meeting of the minds, emotionals, emotion and beliefs. And then, of course, energetically and spiritually, I've got to be attracted. And that comes from my intuition as well. So that comes from my intuition, listening to my higher self, you want to call it, or soul, or universe, or whatever you want to bloody well call it, sort of thing. So, yeah. So now I am attracted to the person, not so much the sex or the gender of the person. All right, now let's go back one more step. What? Serial poly polyamory. Now... Polygamy, polyamory. Polygamy, polyamory. Not the same. Mm -mm 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 -mm. Polygamy, religious. Polyamory is a lifestyle choice in regards to how you um, live your life in regards to your relationships, your intimate relationships specifically. So sort of there. And what is a serial polyamorist? Me. Hello. Hi, I'm Vanessa. I'm a serial polyamorous. What that means is I, whilst I like having multiple partners, I don't like having a harem of multiple partners. It's not my thing. Um, been there, done that, you know, went through a slut phase, what I call a slut phase, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with you like a harem of partners. I'm not judging that. I'm not here to judge that. I'm just here to share me and who I am. This is my vlog and everything like that. So serial polyamorous for me and my experience 
is someone that enjoys um, multiple intimate relationships. I personally, my ideal that I'm striving for is two men, one woman. And yes, I do buy into the genders at that point. Two men and one woman. There's stuff there for a reason why it's only one woman and it's two men and all this sort of stuff. So at this current point in time, uh, and also what's the fact about serial polyamory is that I like to work on one relationship, make sure that's solid, I know where it's at, I know that it's strong, and then I go exploring for another one, which is where I'm at. So I had have a uh, the first one, the first man, man A, or man J, we'll call him man J, we'll use the, uh, we'll use the letters of their first name, man J and man B. So man J, uh, Mr. J, okay, no, we'll even go past that. Mr. J and Mr. B, okay. Mr. J, uh, yes, met him uh, very out of the blue Didn't, uh, when I wasn't expecting it, but it was very new in my tantra journey too, interesting enough. And yeah, I attracted him and we've been uh, playmates for a while now. Yeah, quite a while, a little while, yeah, not, not a year or anything, still under a year, but let's say by the time Christmas comes around, we've definitely known each other and we've definitely been playing with each other for a year. Now, now, Mr. B, very new, very new, very recent, very new, very recent. This vlog is meant to be about Mr. B. Okay, so we won't really talk about Mr. J, we'll talk about Mr. J in another vlog, but uh, we'll talk about Mr. B. Now, how the hell I find him? Here's some lessons for you. Here you can learn from me. Take what you need, use, discard the rest. That's my theory, that's my motto. Take what you need, discard the rest, listen to your intuition, it will know. So, on the new moon uh, recently, uh, I did, and I do new moon ceremonies now. I used to not to for the longest time. My witchy self got really dusty, <laughs> I call it. She got a little dust on her, so I blew off all the dust and I've been embracing uh, my witchiness again, sort of thing. So um, I, in regards to my witchcraft, that's something else. Um, I don't, I, yes, do I do sex magic? Yes, with myself. I haven't really explored it with another person just yet, and I might with Mr. B, but not yet. I do do explore it with myself and highly recommend sex magic with yourself using your own sexual energy, your potency and your orgasms to manifest what you need and desire and require and stuff like that. So anyway, um, and, it's, and it only really helps with this sex magic and you've got to let go, but you also got to let go and surrender to the universe at large knows what it's doing and might take it. It's like you Sometimes the quantum, it'll be a quantum leap as such and it'll happen really quickly. And other times it has to filter out and happen sort of thing. So anyway, anyway, um, Mr. B, I put it out there in the new moon. I wanted a tantric playmate, someone I could do workshops with and explore with and certain concepts with and, certain, and I need him to be a certain type of man and all this sort of stuff. Because Mr. J, love him. I really adore him. But there's limitations in that relationship. And that's okay. That relationship is what it is. That's okay. I still get a fucking lot from it. So Mr. B, uh, he approached me. So that's a big one. Men, listen up. Really got to get rid of that fear of rejection. You've got to be in your masculine, divine self, men. And approach us. We want to be approached. I'm not, and other women like myself who are connected to ourselves, who are strong, independent women, but we're also um, in our feminine radiance in a way. And it, well, when I say feminine radiance, we're not just, oh, airy fairy feminine. We've got some masculinity into ourselves. We've got that dance of the masculine and feminine in ourselves. Uh, so when you approach one of us, know that when we're women, and we've done a lot of develop, you know, stuff with us, uh, ourselves, or, and we're generally more open. We're generally more accepting of who you are. and won't, won't totally slam you down sort of thing. But if we do, to take it personally, it's our own shit. <laughs> okay? Reality is a coexistence. Okay? Co-creation. Well, it's also creation of your own reality. You're creating your own reality moment to moment. It's also co-creation with other people. Delve into that topic another day. <sighs> All right, Mr. B, 
uh, approached me to be a speaker at his little meditation event sort of thing. And I was like, okay, cool. Yeah, I will. I'll take that. Yes, I'll say yes. Got on the phone. And, of course, because I had to, because I had to find out more, you know, what he wanted, blah, blah, blah. So we got talking. Oh, yeah, got talking. And it was just like, yep, okay. And we met uh, prior to the event. We met up. And I specifically did this. Here's, here's something. I specifically wore something I wear every day. I wasn't glammed up because I. the whole point, is for me to be me and it's specifically me to be me it's sometimes my this is me in a way glammed up I'm kind of glammed up but I I'm not at the same time you know I was in a shirt leggings short um pants sort of thing wasn't totally glammed up I had my hair in a ponytail it was a bit messy so sort of but uh the point is I didn't put on airs and graces I was me unapologetically 100% myself and I was kind of standing there in my power to say, this is me, and if you can't accept me in this form, it's not going to work. Because that's the whole thing with Tantra. It's more, it's, yes, it's about the physical body and the physical form, and there has to be a physical attraction, but it's also about the emotional, energetic attraction too. All right? So, um, and I'm just looking for that. I was needing something where there was going to be a good, Emotional, energetic, as well as physical foundation with the person so we could explore. And so anyway, yeah, we got talking. And then the, at the event, got talking more, of course. Uh, and then um, after the event, caught up a few more times. I, it took a while for me to sleep with him. It took a while for him to tap this and for me to tap that sort of thing, you know. <laughs> because that's the point. There's such a thing as a woundmate and soulmate connections. Uh, a woundmate can be if, um, transformed into a soulmate connection with a lot of work from both parties. And sometimes the woundmate can, can be on one end and not the other. But, uh, look, I'll link, link to EJ Love's woundmate soulmate video. Uh, she's one of my mentors. She explains it really well. I'll, I can explain another day, but right now um, I'll link you to that video. You can go watch it, learn about woundmates, soulmates, and all that sort of stuff. So I need what's called a soulmate connection to explore tantrically with another person, especially another male. And so I need to do lots of meeting of the minds, fully clothed, and just talking about sex and sexuality and our past and our, you know, what, um, what we want to explore and to see how at vulnerable at ease we can be with each other and can we hold the space for each other and, you know, and all that sort of stuff, you know. Uh, so, yeah, that's where I'm at. And we did. We did. We did that a few times, quite a few times. Uh, personally, because I'm a little impatient too, I did that quite a few times in a short period of time. <laughs> It's like, well, can we catch up tonight? Can we catch up tonight? <laughs> yes, I did a bit of pursuing. He did a bit of pursuing of me, but I also did pursuing of him. And here's the thing, women. It's okay. It's not too masculine to pursue a man sometimes because this is the dynamic in my other relationship with Mr. J is he used to pursue me, but now I contact him because we've actually um, changed the dynamics recently, last few months of the relationship where it's, that works for the both of us and I'm not going to apologise about that. So work, do what do you and do you best as such, if you know what I mean. So that Mr J relationship is where I contact him, works better, hell of a lot better. Uh, so yeah, we do, so I do that. So, and so I was um, feeling into with Mr B, I, you know, where we're at with that and he sometimes asks me and then I also sometimes ask him because, you know, schedules. Lives, we've both got them. <laughs> so anyway, so anywho, um, this is all leading to somewhere. Don't worry. <laughs> so we met and we talked and we got vulnerable and we got deep and we talked about some very, very, very potent topics. And ah, uh, yeah, uh, you know. So I'm like, I'm attracted physically to him. 
I love how it, uh, his own personal develop, his own journey with tantra and sacred sexuality and conscious sexuality, whatever you want to call it. Love that where he is coming from, what he was doing with it, where he's wanting to go with it, his purpose, his um, intention with it, his intention with me. And he was accepting 1% of me, who I am, and stuff like that. And I told him who I am, blah, 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 blah my perception of myself anyway. And um, what I was more prone, desiring from it. And so here's a key. Here's a key. And this is for anyone. You say yes and. Not just yes. Say yes. It's a very potent part of the puzzle here. Yes and. And is your boundaries, and is what you require and desire, and is your wants and your needs. You really need to be tapped into yourself. You need to know who, who you are, what you want and need, and stuff like that. So I went, yes, and blah, 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 yes, and blah, 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 sort of thing. And then he would, has every opportunity just so I can do that, or how about this, and, you know, that plays into the whole little consent and all that sort of stuff. Um, anyway, anywho, <laughs> uh, let's go back to Mr. B. Uh, so last night, yes, last night, uh, it's a case of I went over and we were chatting. I was only intending to be there for like an hour and a half or two hours or something. Kind of went longer than that. <laughs> yeah. It's like we're just, the conversation just flow. And this is the thing about soulmate connection versus mate and just touching on it is it does flow. It's not intense, not that passionate, intense sort of thing. It's, it flows. It's, you have a friendship. You fucking do have that connection of friendship. You still have a, a, um, a, a magnetizing, like you are drawn to each other. But there's also this flow where it's not wildly passionate and hot and cold and, and ah, you know, and all this sort of stuff. It's actually... More this. Gentle. And that is what I require and desire in a tantric playmate. So anyway, so yeah. Um, and, and me being me, me being who I am, I, t yesterday I was horny. Yesterday I just was all like, fuck. I woke up, I fucking had got myself off because of pure fact, fuck, I needed to. But then, you know, I read this bloody, uh, was in a Facebook group, The Kaleidoscope, highly recommend it. Thank you, Alexa Martinez, The Kaleidoscope Facebook group, fucking highly recommend it. Very good group to be in. And, of course, be in my group, yeah, too. <laughs> but um, there was a blowjob threat, basically. She was asking the guys in the group, and she has quite a few great men in there, beautiful, beautiful men, who are willing to share what, you know, about blowjobs and stuff like that. And that was the thread about it. It was great. It was fucking awesome. You know, it's like, yay! I now know how to do a blowjob. Now, I knew how to do a blowjob before, but, you know, it's like, right, now I've got a whole heap of other stuff to try and work with and stuff and see what works and what doesn't and stuff as well. Because um, with my tantric massages, my lingam massage, I'm doing it with the hands. And my mouth doesn't go. Uh, there's very strong boundaries to my clients. No mouth going anywhere near their bits. No mouth going anywhere near their body. And no sexual genital touch on me. And no sexual stuff like that. I will touch their genitals, but they can't touch me in that way. But they, you know, anyway, so yeah, there's strong boundaries with my clients. So I was like, yeah, I've got something to explore, I've got another penis to explore with. <laughs> so, um, and we'll get on to that too about the penises shortly. So, any, anywho, um, with Mr. B, uh, I. Yeah, so I was reading that blowjob thread, so I was trying to remember where I was. I was reading that blowjob thread, and basically, I was getting so fucking turned on. I rang up Mr. J, Mr. J, because of pure fact of, well, you know, got that established connection with him. I, of course, and fuck, I was just, you know, being like, so this is what I'm going to do to you, and blah, blah, blah. I kind of phone sexed him. And... I could tell he was blushing. He loved it. Yeah. 
<laughs> um, yeah, so anyway, that was that. And then I text Mr. B, see when we could catch up, and he told me when. So um, that was last night, the overnight, after his class he was going to. And if you're wondering what's happening, Gary's behind me, my dog. And I'm just having him. Yeah. So hang on, just wait one second, guys. I'll just show you. Yep, see, Gary. Everyone say hi to Gary. Hello, Gary. <laughs> All right, back to me. <laughs> so anyway, uh, oh, stop it moving. There you go. So with Mr. B, I uh, caught up with a night, we're talking, la, la, la. Lots of vulnerability. That's a huge, that's really great way to establish that foundation and connection and vulnerability. And... I knew me, I was actually feeling into my body and I, I've done this for a while, by the way. Uh, so it's very honed. Uh, so it's my intuition mixed with just body knowing as such. And I don't do birth control, by the way. I don't do BC, no birth control whatsoever. And have I had any risk of pregnancies? No, I don't know why, but I don't know. It's just, I guess... I guess in a way, there's a lot more to it. I could explain in another vlog why I think the reason why I've never ever risked any pregnancies and stuff like that, and I can talk about that and what I've done to in my whole life, even without birth control, to have birth control. Anyway, um, anywho, so was in my body know how, checked in with my body today, and my body was saying it's ovulating. And that's the reason why it was just like, oh, get so turned on by blowjob talk and having to get self off in the morning and all this sort of stuff. So I was quite, quite burnt off, quite, feeling quite turned on and delicious and juicy, you know, just me, be me. And anyway, so all the talk, la la la, there came a point where we'll say, oh, we knew the night was concluding and we hugged. Because I told, I told him one of the big things I need to work on is I've my, I believe in the love languages. Um, if you don't know what it is, uh, Google five love languages. I'll post a link to the love language quiz. Highly, highly recommend you do it. And mine is quality time and touch are my two primary love languages. And one of the big things I want to explore with this guy is touch and receiving touch, especially receiving it and being in surrender of it and all sorts of touch, by the way. I mean all sorts. Anyway, that's for another vlog. Another day, another vlog, another day. Yeah. <laughs> another vlog, another day. Um, I could do this, my catchphrase. Another vlog, another day. Yeah. Uh, so, anywho, um, yeah, we're hugging and I had started to already surrender into the hugs with him and receive them. And because uh, I really, that's something I need to explore. Because like, initially I was all like, <laughs> you know, oh, okay. I was a bit awkward with it, you know, and not really in receiving. I was, yeah, like this, yeah. So I, yeah, I allowed it. And then I allowed the kiss. And kissed up until this point. By the way, met, 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 met. But hadn't kissed. Then I allowed the kiss to happen. I checked in with myself, by the way. I checked in with myself. You've got to always check in with yourself. If you don't want the kiss to happen, speak up. Please speak up. This is regardless of who you are, what gender, okay? But um, please go. If you're going, no, just crossing the boundary, step away. Step back and go, please, at this time, I don't, I'm not feeling into it at this time. And... It, don't then go into, it's not you, it's me, that's crap. Don't go into that, it just sets everyone off, Every anyone. It's just like, not you, it's me. It's like, uh, just go, at this time, I'm not feeling into kissing you. Though I do want to do it at a time when I feel into it, I will give you the heads up sort of thing. So, but anyway, I fell into it. It was a good kiss. <laughs> it was a good kiss. I allowed it, allowed, felt into the sensuality of the kiss. Fuck, my body's going off right now. Um, I do have conversations with my pussy yoni. That's what I call it, pussy yoni. I do have conversations with my pussy yoni. She also has a name. Psy, P-S-Y, P-S-Y, Psy. 
and um, just like saying hello right now, just thinking about all this. <laughs> so, anywho, I'm telling her to shut up right now. Just let me get on with business. Let me go on, thanks. Um, so we had a really good kiss, and then it was just a case that we actually had a talk. We, and this is the thing: we need to be able to be in communication, and I. Yeah, I was all like, uh, and, and the biggest thing is, here's the key, I was the biggest takeaway for me, is I definitely was in my feminine. And I made him step up into his masculine. Because that is what I require and desire, really deeply require and desire, is to be able to surrender a bit more and receive from a man. This is my journey that I need to do. And then it, this is why I want that one female playmate because I'm exploring receiving and being a surrender with the men. But the one play female playmate, I'll probably be in my masculine with. Uh, you know, the play there will be different with the female, with me being in my masculine, sometimes being my feminine, and the play and stuff like that. Yes, I'll still do that with the men. But to be brutally honest with the men, I really need to learn to. Um, be in receptivity of the pleasure from them and cutting away those um, blocks that I've got to it. I do have a lot, I still have lots to work through. No way. I'm not perfect. Far from it. Oof, don't ever put me on a pedestal, peeps. Please, don't ever put me on a pedestal. This is my journey that I'm sharing. And while I'm, at, I'm at where I'm at, I'm hoping you can learn something from it. And I'm giving you permission to journey yourself. And be unapologetically yourself and on your own journey but yeah so anyway um with mr b he kind of suggested like you know what do you want to explore this further from the kiss and i was like because i was saying to him yeah my current state and he kind of got the hint i mean, it was like current state yes because <laughs> sigh my pussy yanni she was all like, hey, hey, over here, hey, hey, this is her, this is her, she's all like, hey, yo, 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 me, 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 yes, it's me, yes, come on, bring it, bring it, <laughs> she was really wanting something, something, <laughs> so uh, I was all like, okay, all right, and basically we talked about, we talked about basically where, I was in receptivity, he was all like, well, we could go back to my room, or, in fact, because he's, if he's on the lower level, the flatmates are on the, uh, there's a two-level house, his flatmates are on top, and his bedroom is literally below their bedroom, and his flatmates is a couple, and basically, if we slept at his place, it would be what's called a pillow biting session. <laughs> and I'm noisy. I do not ever apologize about the noise because I know for me making the noise makes me have more potent orgasms it really fucking does it allows me to be in pleasure more and release whatever's in my body whatever's in my body just fucking ah oh, you know it's just like release it and then that allows me to have more just pleasure and orgasms and fucking just mm, just the whole experience is better sort of thing the more I'm allowed to just go ah, ah, ah and and not just make loud noise I'm not all about the loud noises sometimes I'm like ah. you know very soft noises I'm not always I allow myself to play with the noise I allow myself the noise to be I do not judge it I just let it happen and be anywho um so we had that discussion my place or his place and stuff like that and I will my place because I have some uh, guests arriving today but they're not here yet they weren't there here tonight last night so I have you know the place to myself currently not all the time sometimes I do because I do do Airbnb yeah and and um also I have friends staying and all this sort of stuff so uh anywho so because I I have the I have the place to myself um, at that point in time. We came over to my place and had our. We crossed the threshold basically. We crossed the threshold, and I and yeah, I allowed myself. I didn't control it. 
there was only certain points I spoke up and it was all like, here, do this and this. We already discussed, this is the thing, we'd already discussed a lot prior sort of thing. So he already knew all my safe words. He already knew a lot sort of thing about me to work with. And yeah, so we, I just allowed myself to be in surrender of the whole experience. Love always checked in with myself and my boundaries and if I saw, if I saw something was getting past it. And good thing was he did ask about anal and I'm, I love anal, by the way, I love anal, but I wasn't feeling it for that session. And it's good, he is who he is because I said no and guess what, he wasn't offended, we just kept going. So uh, it's a case of, yeah, sometimes it's not on the table. I love anal, but I'm not always going to do it. Just because I like chocolate doesn't mean I'm going to eat it every day. Sometimes I actually have some days where I don't have chocolate, you know, <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> so, um, anywho, so yeah, we, we crossed the threshold and it was a great experience. And for me, my biggest takeaway from the experience is the fact that now I have two dicks and two penises, two lingams to work with, two beautiful men to work with, and they both are so different. This is why I'm poly. This is why I poly. I love the difference. I love exploring where the limitations and the boundaries are in each relationship and how they're going to interplay and help me meet my needs and, and desires and as well as how I can help meet their needs and desires as that interplay. And also when I say I have two dicks, I literally do. I have one that's circumcised and one that's not. Mm. Perfect universe. I didn't even ask for that, but it worked out. I'm like, Yee, you get to work with tired. You know, so because to be honest, guys are either circumcised or they're not. They're either circumcised or they're not. And I personally don't believe in circumcision for a lot of reasons. Uh, I'll go into another video another day on that. But I literally have in my personal life now. One circumcised penis to work with, one uncircumcised or intact penis to work with. And that for me is so divine and just like exactly what I require and desire because my biggest thing is I really want to feel into how they feel for me, how they feel inside me, how they feel inside me when I do cock worship, how they feel with my hands and how they experience um, my pleasures that I give to them as well, whether they're inside me, inside me, or with my hands. And now, because I've had experiences with both type of dicks in the previous past, but I wasn't conscious of it, you could say, you know, I don't know what word you'd use there, but I just wasn't in awareness of them. I wasn't really wanting to play and really experience their potential, if you know what I mean. Uh, so, yeah, if you know what I mean. <laughs> So, um, yeah, that's pretty much where I'm at. So welcome to my life. Welcome to my adventures as a serial poly pansexual and stay tuned. Share it in the comments below, anything that you took away. What were the best bits about this vlog for you? What did you learn? What was what resonated the most with you? What did you learn? What were you like, oh, I love that bit and la da da da. What would you love for me to actually expand upon or any topics you would love for me to talk about? Post in the comments below. I'm Pet Love Biz on all the socials. So Pet Love Biz, find me on Pet Love Biz on all the socials. And I'll hopefully see you around. Subscribe, like, share, you know, all that biz wacky. So subscribe to my channel for other vlogs and lots of other stuff that I'm uploading over the time because uh, I'm definitely activating my YouTube channel. It is awoken, just like I am. <laughs> so yes, like, share. If you love this video, share it out. And of course, subscribe for more. So as you can see, I don't do like to do editing on my videos. I'm not one of those YouTubers. So yeah, and I am... And my also big thing is I do do long videos. But they're always generally pretty fun, I'm hoping. Yeah. <laughs> Beautiful. I love you. And I'll talk to you soon.
Blessed be.